Welcome back to F-Zero on the Super Nintendo. Today we'll be doing the Queen League, the second set of courses in the game. A nice step up from the Knight League and probably my favorite set of courses in the game. So this will be very enjoyable compared to the King League. Which I do not have yet recorded because... It's hard. Let's put it that way. So anyways, the first course in the Queen League is Mute City 2. Uh, you can see that the colors have changed as we are now racing in the afternoon, which is a nice touch. And uh, other than that, we've got this circle here in the middle of the course. And there are going to be two jump plates instead of one. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of difference between Mute City 2 and Mute City 1. Uh, you'll notice that I'm using the Golden Fox, even though I said I specifically was not going to because it's a bad car. Uh, I changed my mind on that regard. It's still a pretty bad car, but I would rather use that and challenge myself than use the best car in the game, which is the Fire Stingray. And, like, have an easy go at it. So, what's so bad about the Golden Fox? Well, you can already see that its speed caps out at about 430. That's the lowest in the game, even compared to the Blue Falcon. The Golden Fox also has bad steering, and as you'll see at the end of this lap or the next one, bad durability because I just like uh, run into a wall and lose a bunch of power just from that. The Golden Fox is piloted by an ex-paramedic named Dr. Stewart. Uh, he doesn't do much in the in the franchise except be voiced by Dan Green in the TV show, the dub, anyways. Uh, I guess it's worth mentioning that the Golden Fox has good acceleration. At least it gets to that abysmally low top speed pretty quick. Yeah, and this is a stupid orange car. You see how much power I lost there? Not cool. Uh, so I'm not going to be using the Fire Stingray, so I may as well describe its... Uh, parameters since we still have one lap to go. It had the Fire Stingray has the highest top speed, as I mentioned, great control and pretty good durability. Uh, the only thing stopping it from being the best car for anybody to use is its acceleration, which is abysmally low. But uh, speedrunners make the best use of it by having one of the cars bump into them at the start to actually get them into that top speed, and then they stay there. Speaking of speed running, the next course has a neat little trick you can do, which I will demonstrate. Port Town. Ugh. I have never enjoyed Port Town in any F-Zero game. As you can see, I stupidly missed the jump plate and had to wade through dirt for a little bit. That's not going to be very good. Right around here, we will see a new kind of trap, the, some sort of magnet wall that pulls you towards it, kind of like Death Wind. It's a little wind effect, but not nearly the same. Here's the... I think I... yeah, I'm doing the trick now. Yeah, you uh, hit that jump plate, veer right, and then you land on a s another part of the track, skipping most of the course. Uh, that UFO there is supposed to pull you back to where you were before you jumped, but here it doesn't. So you wind up saving some time, even after considering that the UFO is going to pull you back a little bit. Now, this isn't all that useful in Grand Prix mode, because as you can see, I did not... I did not pull ahead of either car that's in front of me right now, but uh, speedrunners use that so they can get the best time possible. But uh, it's not a trick that I like to use all the time. I'm not going to use it in Port Town 2, because it is actually very risky. If you're even slightly off with your jump, you're going to land off course, and that will get you killed. So uh, I'd like to avoid that. Port Town, as you might have guessed by now, is a space harbor and supposedly the, the, the city of origin for Captain Falcon. It's really all 
think we know about the captain is that he hails from Port Town. That's all we know, for sure. Well, actually, that's all anyone seems to know for sure. Uh, this is cutting it close. But if I use a boost... Yeah. Third place, but that isn't too bad. Next up is one of my uh, one of my personal favorite courses because it's pretty fun to play and it's got a nice song to go with it. Uh, Red Canyon is apparently a hideout for a gang of thieves led by Samurai Goro, the pilot of the Fire Stingray. Funnily enough, Samurai Goro fancies himself as Captain Falcon's rival of sorts. Uh, it's known that he's attempted to steal Captain Falcon's kills on numerous occasions. And by kill, I mean bounty hunting kills. It's in the backstory, but... Samurai Goro is also an assist trophy in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Why they did not just go ahead and make him a playable character is not only unknown to me, but is also off-topic. The flashing squares that you see on this course that I'm about to drive over right here are magnetic also. They pull you towards them if you're running over them during a jump. Not at all threatening, but if you run over them on the ground, you'll take a chunk of damage from that. Love that drum solo. Red Canyon one's not particularly hard. At least compared to Port Town. Port Town really just gives you, like, no room for any sort of error. There's no shortcut you can use to get past the computer cars. Uh, because that jumping shortcut won't, like, let you pass them very easily. Oh, look, another exploding car. I hope it doesn't hit me. Best place to boost is right here, so you get over the dirt, but uh, you got to make sure you're able to at least turn. One lap to go here. I haven't even boosted yet. I've conserved all three of my boosts for one lap. If you're going for a best lap time, you should do that. Because then you can use all three boosts on the same lap. Stupid orange car. Out of my way. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm just gonna barely miss first place here. Because one of the cars decided to be annoying. Just over two minutes time, too. Next up is one of my favorites, also. Whiteland. A sparkling, pretty, not all that colorful palette swap of Mute City. I mean, tourist paradise. A anyways. Watch the horizon during this turn. Did you see that? It looked like another part of the course, right? Well, actually, we're not going to go over there at all during this course. That is actually a part of a different course. Fun fact. All of the courses in F-Zero are sort of placed on the same plane of existence, if you will. Like, if I had a good jump, I could probably get onto that other part of the course and drive around it. Well, assuming the UFO doesn't put me back on the correct course. So just a little fun fact. As a matter of fact, it, that part of the course is actually in the fifth and final Queen League course. So when we actually get there, uh, try and see if you can see White Land 1 from there. As for White Land itself... Whiteland 1. It's got ice and snow, as you've seen. It's got plenty of jumps and more magnets. And more exploding cars. Just uh, use your boost on this stretch right here, just in case you miss a jump light and run into the snow. Man, someone really ought to clean the courses. There's ice and snow everywhere. It was probably put there for the challenge, I bet. Ah, but the pit area is so short. You don't want to take very much damage because that pit area is just so small. 
So with luck, we will pass the Fire Stingray and at least get a good second place run here. Yes? No. Yes. No! <laughs> Orange cars again, and why did two of them have to bunch up like that? Oh, I'm in trouble. I have to get into third place or it's going to fail me. That annoying beeping isn't exactly helping game. There we go, we're safe. And uh, as I cross the finish line, you will see that I will have earned enough points for an extra life. I didn't mention it before, but we are in fact earning points. And, ooh, just enough for an extra life, in fact. It's every 10,000 points, of course. The final course is, surprisingly enough, a second White Land course, but it has a really cool remix of the original White Land's theme, so that's pretty epic by itself. This course is the bane of existence of my existence. Well, at least it was a decade ago when I was first playing this. I think, actually, I think it was about two decades ago now. Anyhow, uh. It seems like a pretty simple course, right? Well, watch this jump. Now that probably looked like just a simple, plain old silly jump to you. Well, as a kid, when I was playing this for like the first time and I got to Whiteland 2 finally, I had no idea that you could hold the down button to increase your jumping distance. So I would get to that jump and just lose all of my lives, just, just that one jump, because I did not read the manual and know that you can hold the down button to increase jumping distance. Because you can't get across that jump with just regular jumping distance. Oh. Somebody should let the guys at TV Tropes know that the computers cannot face through those cars after all. <laughs> Uh, even though the computer cars are really big cheaters, it's nice that they at least obey the physics of the game, basically. Well, aside from the Golden Fox being an absolute powerhouse when the computer uses it. Oh, that was a nice thing to do, trying to go into the pit area and get hit. Okay, who's coming up behind me? Probably that stupid Fire Stingray again. You know what, that's actually pretty interesting. The Fire Stingray is almost always in fourth place when the computer uses it. What What's in first place when the computer is using it? The Golden Fox. Oh, and that orange car just now? Proof that the computers cannot die. He was clearly off course. over with. And then I have to deal with the King League. I hate the King League so much. Look forward to that. Oh, goody, I'm gonna... Well, thank you, Fire Stingray. You just saved my race. Funny how that works. Thought it was pretty close to being beaten to death by that orange car yet again. Orange cars are the true enemy of this game. <laughs> Forget the other racers. So that's the Queen League. Very good set of courses. All of them have nice music to go along with them. Uh, with that taken care of, now all I have to deal with is the King League. Oh my goodness, the King League. Might take a while to get that to you because it's so hard, you have no idea. Let me put it this way. The King League has a second Death Wind course, a second Port Town course, and Hell itself. Look forward to that one. <laughs> 